Hi guys, in this video I'm going to continue my French series on the Tarash variation and so let's get straight into it E4, E6, D4, D5 and now Knight D2 So the Tarash is one of the most popular ways for White to meet the French defence um, The other most uh, other really popular line is Knight C3 and then we have the winner after Bishop B4 and personally I quite like playing as Knight C3 in this Bishop B4 line it's uh, pretty sharp stuff which and I'm, I'm sort of an aggressive player as well but in that case, knight d2, and the idea of putting a knight on d2 is now there's no bishop b4 idea. Because after bishop b4, white can just play c3. So instead, we can play. There's a couple of lines I'm going to recommend here. Knight f6 is one one of them. That's the main line, and then also knight to c6 is another line I really like, which I got showed um, a couple of years ago by my coach uh, at the time, and yeah, he recommended this to me. I actually really like it. So I'll show you this one to start off with. And this one's called the Guimard. And the idea is now we attack the pawn on d4. And it does look weird putting a knight out on c6, especially when we haven't played c5, because c5 is one of the most important breaks in the French defence. But here we don't even need c5. When we don't play c5, we're going to play f6 instead, as you shall see. So after we're attacking the d4 pawn, they can play knight gf3. If they play c3 here, then this actually allows us to play e5 already. And now white can actually get a bit of a mess here. After takes, queen takes, knight gf3, takes, bishop c4, queen to f5. So we give back the pawn, knight takes, knight takes, c takes, bishop b6, queen f4 check, bishop d7, queen b3. And now we can just castle. And if white tries to take this pawn on f, f7, he's going to get a lot of problems. For example, if he takes here. Should be very good. He's going knight h6. Bishop's got to retreat somewhere, and we've already got rookie h check. And now the king um, has to move, and it's going to be stuck in the center. And also we've got knight g4 coming. So best move for white here is just to castle, and now we can play bishop d6. And once again, black white can't really take this pawn. It's just a waste of time. It's going to improve our development. And what Black's going to do here is get a really nice attack going with g5 and h5. And he's got also got his two really nice bishops pointing towards the white king. The queen's already over there. We can get our knight up pretty fast. And um, our king's pretty safe over this side. White's got an isolated pawn on d4. So if it ever does get to an end game, then Black's always going to stand a little bit better here. Um, so yeah, overall this position is good for black, and this is why c3 is not such a great move here. But you'll be surprised how many players will play c3, because it was just a natural move, just defending this d4 pawn. So they didn't realise now e5 can come in. So the main move is knight gf3. Now we got knight f6, attacking the e4 pawn. e5, knight d7. Now bishop e2 is the best move. And... Once again, you'll be surprised how many players actually play bishop e2 because this line, this knight c6 line, isn't so known. Um, a lot of people tend to play something like bishop d3 because they know f6 might be coming and then they can use this bishop maybe to attack on its diagonal. It also looks a lot more active on d3. And this is what tends to be where the bishop goes in the Tarash. Um, if I go back to this knight f6 line, I'll show you quickly knight f6. Um, Something like this happens, and then bishop d3, knight c6, and then knight gf3. So this is sort of a similar position to what we just had. Um, and the bishop comes to d3, so if we have c5 in here. Okay, so let's go back into the guillemard after knight c6 instead. Knight gf3, knight c6, e5, knight e7, now bishop e2. Well, there's, a, there's a couple of lines where I can play here. You can go c3, bishop e2, bishop d3. So bishop d2 is the main line, you can go bishop b5 as well. You can play knight b3 stuff. Um, so I guess we'll take a look at the sidelines quickly. They go c3, we've got f6, takes, queen takes f6. This is the idea of the guillemard. We break in the center of our f6, and now we're going to try push with e5. So bishop d6 and castles. And then try break through of e5. So bishop b2, bishop d6, and now knight f1. As is the correct manoeuvre for white. If I guess the most really common option you might get here is something like bishop d3. Uh, and this is not so great because whenever eventually we go e5, we're always going to have an e4 for attacking both these pieces. And um, 
after here and now knight f1 and knight f1 is sort of a hard move to spot especially if you're um, if the white player is not too familiar with with the this line you know the castles looks very natural and we castle and now you see the problem white might think now to get his knight over to g3 but the rook's in the way so now he moves his rook to try to get his knight around he's wasted a move moving the rook now we can play e5 and already we're attacking the pawn takes takes and the knight can't take because the um, queen takes f2 and already uh, black has a really nice position here the bishop's going to come out to g4 the rook's going to swing across the e file and this is exactly how white does, does not want to play it so by playing knight f1 first here what this allows is for white to put his knight out onto say g3 or e3 and then when white castles he doesn't have to put his rook on e1 so he's not wasting a move so we can castle here knight g3 and now knight b6 okay so now because this knight's moved all the way over here there's going to be pressure for this queen against the d pawn if we go e5 so if e5 here takes knight takes and then there's always this queen takes check so instead we're going to play knight b6 first with the idea of going e5 and now sell to bishop, bishop e3 e5 d takes knight e takes e5 and once again um Black's getting a really nice, uh, yeah. Black's getting a really nice position. I mean, White can try one upon here by taking on b6. We can just take back and then taking on d5. But then we go, oops, we play something like bishop e6. And already we're threatening pressure on a2. But we don't even need to take on a2. We've got really nice compensation here. Uh, we can just bring our rook into the e file and. Um, all our pieces of pointing towards black's king so this looks very dangerous for, for white to play this way just to try gain a pawn or two so yeah so here, here black, black gets a really nice position and generally in this game mod variation if black can break out of e5 and uh, like, like, like in this position he's going to always get a very nice position and very good chances to go and win the game so this is why c3 is not one of the best moves okay so another idea that white can try here is uh, bishop b5 okay so after bishop b5 we can just play a6 but the idea of bishop b5 is now if you go f6 this isn't such a big threat they can just castle and then when, they, when you take they take back because we can't win this pawn because there's always this pin against our king so instead what we want to do is play a6 first, and now take take, and now knight b3. Now, the idea of knight b3 is to go into a5 and then take on c6, where our queen's actually going to be trapped. And if this knight does get to a5, it's going to be very hard to defend this pawn. We have to actually go knight back to b8, which is not what we want to do. So, instead, what we can do is we can even play a5 here, threaten to play a4 and start, kick, start kicking the knight. Or we could even just ignore this uh, this idea and just placing um, like c5 here. And c5 is an, an interesting move because now if white, I've play, I've had players play knight a5 here, thinking that they can still come come into c6 anyway and try win our queen. And now we would, we would be forced to play knight p8. But that's not the case. We actually have a really clever move here. We can just play some, we can just play c6. And actually, white is in a lot of trouble now because. So we're attacking his knight, and the knight can't take on c6 because we just move our queen to attack the knight, and now the knight has no retreating squares, and so we'll be a piece up here. Note that this idea doesn't work if you've got your bishop on e7 because then the knight could always take your bishop. Um, so it works. Just immediately here, immediately here, just playing c5, knight a5, c6, and so white would have to play something like knight back to b3. And now already we can start taking in the center. And so if white takes, you can go c5. And once again, the knight can't come to c6 because queen c7. And now the knight retreats, we can start going a5, a4 ideas, and then bishop a6, trying to stop them from castling. And uh, yeah, black, black is a really nice position. So there's two ways you can play here. You have either c5 idea, or you can play just play a5 immediately, and then bishop g5, bishop b7, h4, h6. Push it back to e3, a4, and out knight c5. So white tries to really cramp your position here. So I personally prefer to play c5 instead of a5, but uh, it depends what you like. 
white the black does however get some compensation in the fact that he does have the bishop here and this bishop is also stopping black from uh, white from castling here and this pawn could also potentially become an, a weakness and black has got a very strong looking center possibility of rook b8 and uh, putting a lot of pressure on the b file this player continues like queen d4 bishop b5 protecting the pawn rook h3 queen c8 so preparing to bring the queen into h6 put more pressure on that diagonal castles and now well, after castles we can just start attacking this b2 pawn say queen b7 put our king on d7 which could be very solid d7 and swing this rook all the way across to to b8 and uh, I think black's, black's got a really nice position here as well so going back and the option the white can try is knight b3 immediately here we just go a5 straight away threatening a4 they can play a4 themselves now we go b6 bishop g5 bishop b7 queen d2 h6 so similar to the last variation we want to kick that bishop off g5 now they take we can capture our knight and now we're preparing to play c5 knight c1 c5 c3 castles and black is at least is, e is equal here we can we can just play f6 next move break in the center um, we can even play bishop a6 if you want to trade off bad bishop for good bishop and um, yeah, black, black gets a really nice position after um, after knight b3 these, in these lines so the most common move you'll probably get is bishop d3 or, or bishop b2 because bishop b2 is the main line but uh, not many white players actually know how to play against the, the guimar this knight c6 move because it is so um, like unique looking you know it just seems completely wrong to play knight c6 instead of going c5 in the french so bishop d2 is a very natural looking move and now you can play knight b4 here and uh, force bishop back to e2 and then just go c5, c3, knight c6 and this actually transposes now after something like bishop d3 back into um, the the knight free knight f6 line and then knight gf3 so this can always be good to trick your opponent especially if your opponent normally plays knight e2 instead of knight gf6 and knight gf3 uh, I know that might be complicated what I just said so I'll just show you so here you go, knight f6, and after e5, knight back to d7, bishop d3, c5, bishop d3, c5, c3, knight c6, and now what I was telling you earlier is before we had the position, knight gf3, but white, the main move that white plays here isn't actually knight e2, and against this line from black, a lot of players will probably play knight e2 here, and so you force them. In like an other variation to play knight gf3 instead and then we have this variation with queen b6 castles take take knight takes queen takes and uh, white has to be obviously be very careful in this line because he is a pawn down um he does get some good counter play for it um but he does have to he does have to know this line if he's going to play this so this might be a nice little trap to try in the guimard let's get back to it so well, to bishop d3, we could either play knight b4 here, go, going into that line I just said, or we can just play f6, and this is personally the move I like to play. Um, this is the more aggressive sort of move, keeping in the guillemard style. And now there's two moves white can play, you can even go for knight g5. Um, it's a crazy looking move, because after takes, so there's going to be queen h5 check. This is actually very dangerous. Uh, or there is just e takes f6. So we'll look at knight g5 first. So after this, we can just uh, the very uh, really important move here is just to take on e5 with your knight, because now this allows an escape route for your king. So now d takes e5, f takes g5, queen h5 check, g6. This is also an important move, just giving up that pawn, the bishop, bishop check, and I'll go king d7. Um, and the reason we play g6 is now we actually have a couple of traps. For example, knight f3 looks like a sort of common move here. Sent or looks like a sensible move. Protects the four, five pawn and also threatens bishop takes uh, g5. But this is actually losing because after h takes g6, and now white captures captures the rook. We have bishop b4 check, and we have this discovered attack and win 
the queen. So that's the reason we played g6. So here, white, black has the white has to be very careful um, not to fall into any of these tricks, any of these uh, discovered checks, and then winning winning the bishop. So normally, white tends to play something like f4 here or castles. Um, like f4, and we could take on f4, and then bishop goes back to d3, and uh, they, play, they play bishop back to d3, so they can play castles next move. Obviously, if they play castles now. Once again, we have this really nice just take on g6, queen takes, bishop c5 check, and we win the queen once again. So, to takes, takes, bishop d3, um, play normally continues to sing like queen e8 from black, because we want to try to get the queens off, and um, put pressure on this e5 pawn. So, so black tends to get in a really, pretty decent position after this knight g5 idea. And it was not g5 moves not very commonly played. After f6, the main move is just takes. And now this is just a better version for for black uh, than the bishop e2 line. So the bishop on d3 is not as well placed um, as I'll show you in a minute. Queen takes f6, and now castles. So castles is you, you, they can try sack the pawn, and then rook e1, try and tap e6. We got knight f6. And now knight e4, and this can be pretty dangerous because um, white's already threatening bishop b4 check, bishop b5 check, and then winning the queen. So we go queen b4, and now knight g5. And so this is quite a dangerous line to play against, but I'm pretty sure not many people know um, this line. You know, you don't have to take the pawn, you can just go bishop d6, just decline it, um, and then they're going to be forced to play something like c3, and it just transposes. There's normally a lot of white players will just play c3 immediately here. And now we just go bishop d6, continue with our plan, castles, castles. And a very common move here is just to play something like rook e1. I've had this a lot of times just because it looks like you're putting a lot of pressure on, on e6 and potentially stopping e5, but you can never stop c5 move. And this is the reason this bishop's not so greatly placed on d3, because now we're already threatening e4 winning a piece. And also, there's going to be no queen attacks on this d5 pawn because the two pieces are already in the way. And also, when white takes here, we're going to have to take. We capture our knight. We're already attacking a bishop. Knight can't take because the queen takes f2. And we just recapture the knight. So here, the bishop's already in trouble. It has to go back to e2. And then white's just wasted a tempo. He might as well just have the bishop on e2. If he tries something like bishop b1 and then some queen c2 ideas, then we just go bishop g4. And now we're going to threatening to double up pawns on on f3 so bishop b2 is going to have to be played and we can increase the pressure bishop g4 swing the rook across to the e-file and uh, black black has the better game here so going back that's why bishop d3 is not such a great line and the best move here is to play bishop b2 and this isn't the main line guimard so white's going to play knight f1 immediately and knight e3 but as I say, not many people know this sort of idea of playing bishop e2 doesn't look like the best move. Um, and also this knight f1, knight e3 is pretty difficult to see. Um, especially immediately, a lot of players will go knight f1 and then go knight g3. They won't see this knight e3 idea. So f6 takes, queen takes, knight f1, bishop d6, and now knight e3. And the reason this move is actually, this is the best way to play against Guimard, and putting a bishop on e2 is because now there's going to be a lot of pressure against the d5 pawn, so it's going to be very hard for black to break with e5. And that's going to be putting pressure on and then potentially the queen as well. So here we can just castle, castle, and then we can play queen g6, g3, and now knight f6, knight h4, queen e8, f4, bishop d7, rook e1, knight e7. So we're going to bring our knight around, knight g4, c5, and c3, and I'd say this is very close here. Um, it's probably slightly better for white still, but I'd give it, in my opinion, I sort of think it's equal here. Black has good chances to go on to win. He can already put his knight on e4. He can put his knight into f5 uh, at some point, so I'd probably play knight, my knight into e4 first. Now my knight into e f5. Put a lot of pressure on d4. We can take on d4 and then swing a rook across to, to uh, c8. And uh, I can't see how black's any worse here. We can even play bishop b5 
and try to swap off uh, our path for good bishop. So yeah, this is the Guimard variation, and I, I highly recommend this. is one of my favorite lines to play, especially if you're playing against a, a guy who you know is not so familiar with the tarot, if you just started learning it or something. I I would recommend playing playing the Guimard. Okay, so knight d2, and now the other move I recommend is knight f6. This is the other line I play normally against high rated players or players that I know have played the Tarash their whole life and probably not going to know a decent line against the Guimard. So here they get, so here the move is e5, knight back to d7, and now f4, bishop d3. So we'll look at f4 first. So f4 is sort of going for a four pawn attack thing. c3. Knight c6, knight d3, and now c takes d4, c takes d4, queen b6, g3, bishop b4, check, king f2, and now g5. And so it's quite a sharp variation, because um, now if white tries taking on g5, we're going to have these knight takes e5 tricks with the pin on the king. So here, white tends to play, it's got two moves, you can either take or play h3. So if he takes, we can take. Uh, knight takes, knight takes, and obviously the pawn can't take the pin still. Bishop b3, knight c4, and this position is about equal. And if white tries to play h3 instead, we can take, take f6. The king moves, and we go all the way back with bishop f8. It's also putting pressure on the b2 pawn. Rook h2, queen takes b2, check, king h1, queen a3, rook c1, bishop g7, bishop d3, and then this castle. And Black's also got a fairly decent position here. He's a pawn up already, um, but White does have quite dangerous compensation, and his king's re relatively safe. So here you've got to be a little careful and uh, just try to trade off some pieces and just reduce reduce the tension. But these this line tends to be pretty crazy. Um, what else can White try here? So we just looked at Knight D F three. He can also play. Knight g f3 as well. And now against this move, I just suggest to get a5. Bishop b5, queen b6, queen a4. Takes, knight takes d4. And now knight c5. So we're attacking the queen. Queen moves back. Bishop d7. Takes, pawn takes c6. And actually, black has a slight advantage here. Um, we, we can just. If we even remo remove our, our bishop around to a6, so we can just play c5. Um, if you put a rock on b8 and put a lot of pressure on the b2 pawn, or we'll even just break in the center of f6. So black has a lot of um, nice plans here. He, ha he has the better center and he has the, uh, the bishop pair. So I'll definitely take black in this position. Okay, so now we get another line they can try. Is actually in this line. Um, well, I just showed you, you can take taking a queen b6. But another line you can also try here is. Queen a5, um, threatening to take on d4 and exploit this pin. Okay, so now bishop b3, we can play something like b5, go b4, put a lot of pressure on c3, takes b4, like d4, takes on c5, queen a4, bishop b7, bishop b5, knight cb8, and now, um, well, this position is very slightly better for white, but it's not, it's not too bad for black. Personally, I don't like this line as much. It looks a little scary and pieces look passive. Um, I would play this line instead. It's very, very aggressive. It's still the main line. Okay, so instead they can also they can also play bishop d3 here. C5, c3, and now knight to c6. You can also play b6 here, and this is sort of a more of a way to get a draw just try and swap off these bishops bad for good uh, so bishop b2 bishop a6 takes takes castles b5 a4 b4 c4 knight c7 knight f4 bishop b7 c takes e takes d takes knight takes and um yes yeah, positions pretty equal so this is a pretty good line to try if you want to just get a draw uh, we're going to put one of these knights on e6 and we're just going to castle next move as well Maybe reinforces pawn of a5, and uh, yeah, black, black's fine in position. But if you're trying to win, then go for the main line, knight c6. 
Okay, so now it's two moves. White can play, can even go knight gf3 or knight e2. So we'll look at knight gf3 first. Queen b6. And now white just sacrifices the pawns. The idea in this line, we take, take, knight takes, queen, knight takes, queen takes, and now knight f3. Queen has to go back, queen a4, and now um, a good move for black is just to play queen b4. Um, white's already threatening to come over to the to the king side. So say we play some sloppy, like bishop b7. Then just queen to g4 is already putting black in a little bit of a mess because um, yeah, we castle now. Then bishop h6, and they and white's winning the exchange because the only way to stop checkmate here is just to go g6, and then white wins the exchange. And if we don't castle, if we play something like g6 to protect the pawn instead, then something like h4 is coming, and say h5. Um, Queen can just drop back, and then there's a lot of really weak dark squares around the king. And the bishop's just going to come into g5, and this is not what we want to do. So instead, we just go queen b4. Okay, and white doesn't want to swap off queens because we're blacks a pawn up here. So queen back to c2, queen c5. Once again, putting pressure, just trying to swap queens off. And now bishop takes h7. So white tries to regain his pawn, and here we can just play b6. Uh, with the idea of going bishop a6, rook c8, and also even just threatening something like g6 and try trapping the bishop in. So this is also a, a good way to play against the knight gf3 line. But the most common move you'll get in the Tarash if you do go for this 3 knight f6 line is knight e2. You'll come across this the most. And now we can just take, take, and go f6. And another line you can try is something like queen b6, attacking a pawn, knight f3, f6. Um, but it sort of goes back into the main line. It's just trying to be a little tricky here. With putting your queen on b6, because normally your queen goes on c7, these lines, as you shall see in a minute. So the probably best is just to take, take, and then go f6. Just keep your options open. And now there's two moves white can play. I'll go over knight f4 quickly. Because um, pretty much all the moves here are forced. Knight f4. They threatening e6 and also queen to h5 check, which is very unpleasant. So we can take on d4, protecting e6, now to queen h5 check, king e7 takes, knight takes, knight g6 check. So, uh, so when we take, they're going to win our rook. This is okay, we just take, queen takes, and now uh, we want to play king f7. The reason we play king f7 is to protect this pawn from the bishop, king f7, and now. Um, White like quite often plays queen h4 here because once again we have a, a sort of position where if white tries to think like knight f3 then we've got these bishop b4 check ideas as we saw before and we're going to win the queen so queen will go back to uh, to h4 here after queen h4 we get e5 um, so you have to queen h4 they're also attacking our knight so we go e5 and also threatening to go e4. And now knight f3, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop f5. This is all very well known. Bishop takes, g takes, bishop g5, queen a5 check, king goes to f1, and now g6. And no, this isn't blundering a piece, by the way, because now if bishop takes f6 and just queen a6 check, king goes to g2, and we retake on uh, and f6. And I've had a couple of games. Um, with this line as black, he we are we are the exchange down. We have a pawn and a bishop for the rook, but we do have a very very strong center. And white does have these um, doubled f pawns, and it, it can be very hard for white to actually exploit his rook advantage because we're just, the only only file that's open is the f, uh, the c file. So what we're going to do is just put a bishop on c5 and play b6 and just completely block it up, and then we actually have these pawns that can start rolling. Up the board and it could be very dangerous. And normally white tries to keep the queens on here. We'll say something like queen e4. It's also threatening to go queen into d7 and we just go queen c6. Um, and I'll say something like queen b3, just bishop c5 and a rook comes to attack this pawn. We just go king up. Rook goes this way, just play b6. And uh, yeah, it's very hard for white to actually break through here. And if they do try to take sort of queens off, King takes and then say rook a c1. 
So we can't put our bishop on to uh, c5 just yet, but we can just play bishop d6, stopping coming to c7. Now all these squares we control, so um, why can't why can't get down here just yet? And now if they try something like rook c2, trying to come around the back again. Well, I'm not sure it's so great that white trying to swap off rooks here, um, but we can just play, bring our king across, and then say rook. Oops. Bring this rook across as well. King back, and now there's still no way for for white to get down um, this file. So yeah, it can be very tricky for white to break through. And what we're going to want to do is play b6, bishop c5, and then gradually start pushing these pawns. Um, also playing g5 is a good option, stopping any f4 breaks. So yeah, you won't you won't get this very common uh, a lot. You know, it's knight f4 moves not that common to play against. So going back, the main move is just to take on f6, and now we play knight takes f6. So in the guillemard we'd play queen takes f6, but it has a slightly different position. Here we play knight takes f6, castles bishop d6, knight f3, and now queen c7. So as I mentioned before, that other line had queen b6 involved. And this is also where you can play and put pressure on b2, but it's not the best. Queen c7 is the better move here. And the reason you want to play queen c7 before castling is to stop any bishop f4. Moves trying to swap off your good bishop. So now bishop g5, castles, bishop h4, e5. So we want to try breaking the center, similar to the guillemard style. d takes, knight takes e5. And uh, black has a pretty decent position already. Um, we're already threatening to take on f3 of check, and then it's going to be bishop takes h2. Um, our bishop can always, is also free to develop to g4. And yeah, I, I definitely prefer black in this position. It's not the best way for white to play. Um, other ways that white can play, you can play stuff like knight c3. At some point, if they do play any knight c3, the idea is you just go a6, stopping the knight coming to b5. And now they might play bishop g5, just castle again. And now they go knight uh, bishop h4. Um, this is slightly different because now after e5, they're going to take the rook takes, and there's, the pawn of d5 is going to be hanging. So instead, we can play knight h5 here. And now there's two moves, rook c1 and rook e1. Rook c1, we go g6. This is a nice idea. It allows our queen to swing over to g7. And it's also stopping any checks on h7. So now after knight e4, we can just go something like bishop d7 as well. Just trying to put pressure on this knight, knight c5. Rook f8, with b4, bishop c8. Friends go b6. This is one way to play it, or you can just get on with it, you know, after after knight a4 you can also just go queen g7. Just get on the get on with this um the idea of just attacking we move h6 and you go g5. If knight puts if white goes knight b6, you just play our rook to uh b8 and if they take our bishop and so what? This is a really bad bishop. They can have it if they want it. And so we can bar knight to f4 next move as well. So another way white can play is also um, with rook e1 here, and now we go g6 again, same idea, we'll put our queen over to g5, now rook c1, so these are very typical white moves, just putting the rooks on these semi-open files, now we go queen g7, bishop back to f1, bishop d7, uh, knight e5, and now it's rook f4, let's say after knight takes, we go pawn takes, Allowing like this B file to be controlled by our rook. Now the bishop g3. Um, we can just take on g3, h takes g3, just drop our rook back, or even just take on d4 here. Take on d4, just winning a whole pawn. So, uh, yeah, this line's very good for, for black normally. So after knight h5, normally it gets very. It can get very. Uh, Tricky here, because it can get well. It can get very complicated because Black's got these lines where he's, he's going to take on f3, and then also take on h2. Um, but I won't get into those. They're, they're really theoretical, and I just suggest there's playing this g6 idea. It's going g6 and swing the queen over to g7, and I, I actually really like this plan. So just as I just mentioned here, just swing the queen over to g7, get the gang off these rook. Uh, the C file, 
and eventually we can even play just h6, g5, break this away, or put our knight to f4 to help reinforce the e6 pawn. Um, we had also the point of this g6 pawn, uh, playing g6 is to stop any bishop h h7 checks. So already we're threatening to take on d4 here, hence why bishop f1 was played. Um, so yeah, I, I actually, I really like this way of playing for black, and I've played this a couple times in, in my games and got really good results of it. And uh, obviously white doesn't white doesn't tend to know his line as well either, so it's also a big plus. So there's not be big like, preparation um, in this line waiting for you. So that is everything on the Tarash. Uh, as I showed you at the start, I'm going to recommend the knight f6 and knight c6 lines. Obviously there's a lot of lines you can play against the Tarash. Um, you can also play moves like c5 here, or you can just take on e4 if you want to try to get a draw. You can even play uh, a6 lines. h6 is actually a move as well. Uh, it, yeah, the possibilities are never ending, and this video would end up being over an hour or so long. So I'm just going to give you two options, just in case you don't like the other one. And yeah, I hope I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.